So I finally decided to watch Blue Lock, and goddamn, is this anime great. And after watching it, I think this is the most enjoyment I have ever gotten out of a sports anime. And that's mainly due to just how unique and different it is from every other sports anime out there. Blue Lock follows Yoichi Asagi, a really good football player, who decides to join the Blue Lock program in order to get good and no longer remain a hard stuck bronze player. Remember, it's one for all, and all for one. But in order to do that, he will have to face off against 299 of the best strikers that Japan has to offer, who are all fighting to become the greatest striker ever. Where the consequences for failing means the death of their football career, the stakes couldn't be any higher. And Isagi is the second worst striker there, except for Attack on Titan Connie Copycat. And I love how right off the bat, Blue Lock separates itself from every other sports anime, by making every team fight amongst themselves over a game of tag, where whoever is it last immediately fails Blue Lock. And in the final seconds of the game of tag, Isagi harnesses his inner and I took that personally demon and pelts the ball straight towards Ryusuke, resulting in it obliterating his face, while also simultaneously annihilating Ryusuke's hopes and dreams as now he'll never be able to play football ever again. Which is just like, wow, man got hit in the face with a ball and now he's banned from football. This trend of crushing people's dreams is something that Isagi will continue to do throughout the anime. But for now, Isagi becomes acquainted with the remaining people in his team. The most notable characters being, I have a demon that speaks to me, aka psychopathic tendencies Meguru Bachira, Jingo Raichi, who looks like Bakugo from My Hero Academia and Shinji from Fire Force did a Dragon Ball fusion, and of course, my boy Ichigo Kurosaki from Bleach, but for real, why does he look so much like Ichigo, I have no idea. But all joking aside, Rinsuke Kunigami is a great character and I find it funny how they refer to him as Hero, considering his partial resemblance to Ichigo. There are some other really great characters in this anime, like Hyoma Chigiri and Gin Gagamaru, but when you have 11 characters to work with, you run into some issues with character development and growth, as there are going to be some characters who don't get as much screen time as others, and it's painfully clear who the main and supporting characters are for this anime, and who's just there to exist as filler. Where compared to other sports animes like Haiku and Kuroko no Basketball, who have significantly less people playing at once. It allows for less of a need to have meaningless characters, as with less people, it gives the remaining characters more opportunities to grow, without other characters being left out and given no character growth at all. Maybe Ego should have set up a six-a-side team instead. The time has come for Blue Lock to change this country. I don't think this is a huge detriment to Blue Lock, but it does make it a tad predictable during the early stages of the anime with who's going to be around a while and who isn't. But by episode 12, that is no longer an issue, with only the important characters remaining. Although I certainly wasn't expecting Ryusuke to go out this early, considering how important he seemed to the story. Another thing that I didn't really enjoy about this anime was the CGI. Now I know that shitting on CGI is nothing new, and that's because it's not just bad, it's really bad. It looks like the animators took some inspiration from Exarm while the CGI was being used. <laughs> The CGI isn't used frequently, but when it is used, it looks horrendous. But I would still say that Blue Lock's solid art style and superb animation at times helps balance out the CGI's shortcomings. So when it comes to Blue Lock's animation, it has very high highs and very low lows. Other than those issues though, I loved this anime, especially just how over the top it can be. I don't know if you know this, but Blue Lock isn't exactly the most realistic sports anime ever made. If you watch this anime expecting to see how football is supposed to be played, you came to the wrong place. Especially since the anime only includes strikers and none of the other positions played in football. And off the premise alone, you know it's going to be something completely different to the generic sports anime. But because of the unrealistic nature of Blue Lock, it has garnered a lot of criticism. And sure, if people were going into this anime expecting your stereotypical sports anime, they're going to be surprised by what they see. And while Blue Lock certainly embellishes a lot of things, including goals and special dribble moves with effects to help exaggerate how cool they are, there isn't any Anything too unrealistic in this anime, especially when compared to an anime like Kuroko no Basketball, where they pull off some of the craziest moves I've ever seen. I think that exaggerating the way they score in Blue Lock makes everything so much more hype and perfectly fits in line with this anime's central themes of egoism and winning. Doing whatever it takes to be the best by believing that no matter what, you are the best and making yourself stand out more 
more than anyone else because that is the sign of a truly perfect striker, with the effects being used to emphasize something spectacular over something ordinary. And I especially enjoy when they get those effect in their eyes because that's how you know shit's about to go down. The soundtrack to Blue Lock is also incredible and one of my favorite anime soundtracks to listen to for how unique and different it is to so many other anime soundtracks. There is nothing that makes Blue Lock a sports anime, especially when Blue Lock's entire premise goes against everything that a sports anime is. Because Blue Lock's central focus is placed on egoism instead of teamwork, it is unlike any other sports anime to come out. Although there is teamwork prevalent at the start of the anime, by the time Isagi gets to the second selection, all that goes out the window in favor of individual talent and skills. And while I do miss some of the camaraderie and testosterone fuel moments at the start of the anime with Blue Lock, this is always what was going to happen. You can't be the best striker if you need help from others. You need to be able to succeed off your own individual talent and skills. Blue Lock is more like a battle shonen, where the main focus is on football. There are no allies, it's every man for themselves. That's clear as day during Team Z's first match against Team X, where they are all fighting over the ball even though they're on the same team, as each one of them want to stand out more than the other and be the guy to score the goal. Because of all this toxic behavior, they end up losing, but not before getting a snippet of Isagi's potential, with him serving up the perfect pass to Kunigami for the goal. And it's during their second match against Team Y, where everyone on Team Z is working together and because of this they end up winning and crushing the dreams of Team Y. This is why any of the teams are even working together, it's because of circumstance, because they have to, and if they don't, they will lose their only chance of being the best striker in the world. There's a particular line I think summarizes this well when Isagi is talking to Chigiri during their match against Team W. You idiot. I wasn't saying it for you. The idea of having everything to gain, but also everything to lose, is perfect. It pushes every person to Blue Lock to their absolute limits, because they know that by winning they'll become the best striker, which gives them the incentive to want to improve and win, and by telling them that they'll never be able to play football again if they fail, gives them the perfect motivator to do their best at all times. That being fear. But even more than that is how Blue Lock helps the players to overcome their fears and improve inside of Blue Lock, Chigiri being the easiest example. Chigiri starts off as a super mellow and depressing character who previously suffered an ACL tear. He is literally the football Derrick Rose of this anime. He initially joined Blue Lock to search for a reason to give up on his football career and that's reflected in his mood and his effort level. He even says so himself. This mentality of his is a weakness for his team as without him putting in 100% effort there's no way his team can win. But thanks to Isagi, Chigiri is inspired by just how passionate he is about football and this helps Chigiri to let go of all the worry and fear surrounding his leg and treat every game like it's his life wanting to give 100% to the sport until the very end. This proves to be a vital component to their team as Kuon ends up betraying the team, which it did not expect at all to happen, but it just goes to show how different Blue Lock is compared to most sports animes. In Blue Lock, there can only be one winner, meaning that friendships and teammates are all but illusions, and that when it comes down to it, people will do whatever it takes to be the one on top above everybody else. And after barely squeaking out the win, they realize that their final match will be against Team V, the undefeated team of building five, but not before Ego tells them how trash they are, and then just pieces out like he did nothing wrong. Currently your only consistency is inconsistency. In this match against Team V, Team Z pulls together an Allen Iverson Game 1 performance against the Lakers and it makes for one of the most hype matches that Blue Lock has to offer. When you're overmatched and you're pushed to the edge wondering if your dreams are going to die, you either break or come back twice as hard. And boy does Team Z come back. Down 3-0 with their morale crushed and feeling hopeless, they start to give up. When out of nowhere, Bartra strings together some insane dribbling combos and manages to score all on his own. This one point would prove to be the spark for the entire team with everyone playing out of their minds in order to win. With even Kuon coming in with the Draymond Green play. This is also where Jingo Raichi's character shines the most as he has two of the best lines of dialogue in back to back episodes. Where the heck did you come from? Straight out of your nightmares pal. And thanks to Isagi's incredible spatial awareness and predictions, they pull off a win against all odds. This was a match that just kept cranking the intensity and is filled with nothing but pure hype. Sure, the fight is exaggerated a lot, but that's what makes it so enjoyable and so much more exciting to watch than other sports animes. After this victory against Team V, the second selection begins. And if the first half of Blue Lock felt different from a sports anime, then the second half is a whole nother story. It's in the second selection where Isagi shows just how great of a character he can be and how much 
much he's constantly improving and polishing his skills. Whether it be with him playing out simulations in his head of possible plays, or him perfecting his direct shot. Isagi is a character who is not afraid to change who he is, and completely alter his perspective and views on what he needs to do to be the best striker in the world. And I like how puzzle pieces are used as the imagery for how close he is to learning something new, or him devouring other people's styles to improve himself. I found it really satisfying watching Isaki grow as a character, he isn't afraid to utilize whatever he's learned and use it as much as possible, regardless of whether he completely changes as a player, because to Isagi, the only thing that matters is winning, and that's one thing this anime teaches you, and that is to never give up, no matter the odds, and just always strive to improve. Watching this anime feels like you have your own personal motivator right next to you, pushing you to do your best. I don't know what to expect from the second selection, but what it ended up being was amazing. I really enjoy how it shifts from a team of 11 to teams of 3, making it more about the individual skills and characters, and how effective they are when they don't have their teammates with them, which helps to separate the ordinary from the geniuses. Every single one of the rivalry battles in the second selection are excellent. The first one with Rini Toshi is a great tone setter with just how big of a gap there is in their skill level. Although there is clearly some power creeping going on, I don't mind it that much as the pursuit of perfection in sports is driven by wanting to beat someone better than you and surpass them. Even though Rin is a tad overdramatic and acts like a TikToker who just got opposed in one of their videos, you're all half-baked NPCs to me. He's a pretty interesting character, and off of his life or death mindset, he makes for a perfect rival for Isagi to rise against and surpass. As over the course of the second selection, Isagi learns from Steph Curry about the importance of off-ball movement and players' blind spots, using this to his advantage. I also found Baro to be a surprisingly enjoyable character throughout the second selection, especially in episode 16. <laughs> And I like how his perspective and playstyle completely changes after getting humbled by Isagi, becoming a much less selfish person and more open to the ideas of others. Just another one of the ways that Isagi helps to positively affect the ones around him, even if he has to go a little overboard sometimes. Everything that happens builds up to this rematch against Rina Toshi, and boy was it worth it. This last match was nothing but pure adrenaline the whole way through, with an epic duel ensuing between both Itoshi and Isagi over who can read the field better, making play after play, with the match being decided over nothing but luck, with nothing else left to chance. This match also does a great job with Bartra's character growth as he begins to play soccer for himself and defeats his inner demon, making him slightly less psychopathic. There was also a lot of computer references for some reason. Reason, I don't know why. If I had to guess, that's exactly how his operating system works. Now I'm wondering if my OS can keep up. And after all that, they move on to the third selection, and it was a welcome sight to see so many familiar faces, especially Raichi, but I was shocked that there was no Kunigami, especially since the Attack on Titan Connie lookalike Igarashi made it, looking a little more psychopathic than before. I thought for sure Kunigami was an important character, so him being gone so quickly definitely surprised me a bit, and I kinda miss his character, I wish he didn't have to go out so soon. But overall, I really enjoyed Blue Lock. While I can go a little overboard with all the making a chemical reaction, devouring player skills and cannibalizing each other's plays sometimes, and even though some of these characters belong in a mental hospital instead of on the field, I love them and the way they interact and banter with each other, it does a good job at humanizing these characters and with the way their friendships develop, with an understanding that it's still every man for himself in Blue Lock, treating each other as both friend and rival. I also enjoyed how Blue Lock itself changes the people inside of it, whether it be for the better or for the worse. Blue Lock's pursuit of something completely unlike any other sports anime is so interesting and worthwhile to watch, where the focus is on egoism and making yourself the number one player in the world rather than playing as a team, especially with how it draws on the importance of constantly growing as a person. This is an anime filled with plenty of heart-pounding action that exudes nothing but hype and makes every match so engrossing and worthwhile to watch, but also enough somber moments and great character development to help give this anime substance beyond the action, where the friendships between the characters feel honest and well-earned. This is what makes it such an incredibly refreshing anime anime to watch, and after getting their asses handed to them by the World 5, along with some wonderful English, I am very excited to see what happens next. Thank you all for watching the video, I hope you all enjoyed, and I can't wait to see you all next time.